where God is building the total man from the inside out. I am Pastor David Smith, and we just thank you for tuning in. Um, today I want to talk about law and grace. I want to talk about the difference between the law and grace, because what I believe is that most people in the body of Christ, what we try to do, we try to earn the favor of God by a law system, and I will talk about that. And instead of understanding there's a system of grace, we fall up underneath, all right? So we're going to pray, and then we're going to get into the word. Father, we come to you, Lord, and I just want to thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for those who are listening this morning. I pray, Lord, that you will open up the eyes of their understanding, that they may be enlightened that we might be enlightened, Lord. Download revelation so that we can be inspired, so that we can be encouraged today. In Jesus' name, everybody agree with that prayer? Just say amen. 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 All right, so today I want to talk about law and grace. And when I say law, I mean the commandments of God, the Ten Commandments. Most of us are familiar with the Ten Commandments. But did you know there were other commandments that God has had given the children of Israel? Not only that, so so let me just talk about that for a moment. So when I say grace, what am I what I what do I mean? A system of obtaining righteousness. That's grace. A system for obtaining righteousness. When we talk about law. I'm talking about a system for earning God's favor. So there's two different things. Grace is a system to obtain righteousness. And then when you talk about the law, it is a system that earns God righteousness, that earns the favor of God. And I want us to really hone in on the difference so that you can find out where you are. So grace, a system for obtaining righteousness as a free gift by putting your confidence or your trust in the blood of Jesus. How many of us have trust in Jesus' blood? It's the blood of Jesus. So once you give your life over to Jesus, once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, because of the blood, because of what Jesus Christ has done for you, immediately you obtain righteousness. Righteousness has been imputed on the inside of you. In other words, it's been accredited to your account, your spiritual account. Can we agree with that? The moment you receive Jesus Christ, the moment you say, Lord, forgive me for my sins, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sins and that you raised from the dead, immediately there has been a radical change. Yes. That means that you have become righteous in God's sight. All right? Now, why is that so important? Well, we'll see later on. It's very important to understand that. So, the grace or favor of God position you in righteousness. That means right standing with God so that you will be in a position to receive more grace. More grace, greater grace, more favor of God. So let me just repeat that. A person who receives Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, immediately they are in right standing with God. They are righteous. And now they are in a perfect position to receive more grace. How many of us know we need more grace? Yes. Amen. All right? Amen. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that's where I'm going to go. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I want to start with verse 21. It says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become righteousness, or the righteousness of God in him. Now, also, I want to uh, mention something here. How many of us heard the word justification? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very important, too, because the word justification means acquittal or declared righteous. 
So let me show some hands. Show me some hands of who believe they're righteous. Okay, yeah, come on, let's lift the hands up high. Let's lift them up high. You might say, well, Pastor David, I don't, I'm not there yet. I don't think I'm righteous. But let me just read it again. Grace, remember I talked about a grace, grace, a system for obtaining righteousness. It as a free gift. Say free gift. Free, free gift. gift. Do you earn a gift or is it free? It's free. It's usually All free. Right. So, how many of us can agree right now that righteousness is a free gift? Yes. All right. So, let me say this again. Grace, a system for obtaining righteousness as a free gift by putting your what? Your confidence and your trust in the blood of Jesus, right? Yes. So, let me ask you a question. How many of us are righteous in here? That's right. Did you earn it? It's the blood. You never earned it. So faith, let me tell you how, why faith plays an important role in this. Because faith is the conduit or it is the channel, watch this, faith is the channel to receive the blessings of God. Amen. Faith is the channel in which the righteousness comes in. All right, are y'all following what I'm saying so far? Mm -hmm. Say, I am righteous. I am righteous. Say, I didn't, I didn't make myself righteous. I did not make, I didn't make myself righteous. But it's because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. All right, so 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for you, for me, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. Amen. Why is that so important? Because, again, when you know who you are, when you know... You are righteous because of what Jesus has done, then you can operate in that grace. Yes. But when you don't know that you are righteous in the sight of God, then what will happen is you will fall under that law system, that legalistic system where you try to earn the favor of God. How many of us have been to that place where we try to earn the favor of God? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we struggle with a certain sin, and, 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 and then we want to get back in right standing with God. And so we say, man, I, I, you know, I'm struggling with this particular sin, and now I, I just need to get back right with God, right? I need to get back right with God. I need to read a little bit more. I need to kind of study a little bit more. I need to be more on that straight and narrow. What are you trying to do? You're trying to earn his grace. You're trying to earn the favor of God. You cannot earn God's favor. All right? Because if you try to earn the favor of God, I tell you, Chauncey, it's going to... It, it's, it's going to... It, you're going to feel like there's a weight on you. How many of us ever got to that place where, you know, you just feel that it's just a weight oh, yeah. Yeah. on you? That's because we're, we're not really understanding the grace of God here. All right, here's another one. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. It says, for what the law... Now, when I talk about the law, I'm talking about the Ten Commandments, okay? I'm talking about the law as being the Ten Commandments where you had to be obedient, perfectly obedient, all right? To follow every detail of the law in order to get the favor of God. And we're going to talk about that in a moment, but I'm just trying to set it up for you. So in Romans chapter 8, starting with verse 4, oh, I'm sorry, starting with verse 3, it says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh... God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. In other words, he condemned sin because Jesus got on that cross and he was and, and sin was condemned. Say this when we say, my sin was condemned. My sin was condemned. That's very important to understand. Because if you don't understand how Jesus took all your sin and God condemned it. Wow. Sin. Your sin, my sin. Right? Amen. Your sin, my sin. Let me give you another one. Um, in 1 Peter chapter 3, starting with verse 18, it says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, 
the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. I want y'all to follow me here, okay? Here's another one in John chapter 19, starting with verse 28. And this is John 19, verse 28 through verse 30 is a, a very significant uh, uh, verse here because it says, after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it, on, uh, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. finished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. So, to have faith in Jesus is saying to have faith in the finished work of Jesus. How many of us can agree with that? Yeah, man. Why is this so important? Because to, under, to know this is, is represents your freedom. It represents your liberty. Why? It represents your freedom because not knowing that or knowing the depth of that or not having insight into that truth there, you will get to a place where you think that you, you have fallen out of the grace of God or the favor of God. And what you will start doing is because we struggle with sin, we will try to earn the favor of God back through works. Yeah. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying here? Yeah. Through works. It's hard to earn someone's favor because now you don't know how, how much I need to go farther in order to receive God's goodness Come on. or to receive God's approval or to receive the favor or the grace of God. And I tell you, people of God, it is just such hard work not understanding the grace of God because you want to try to earn the favor of God. Yeah. See? All right. Y'all still with me here? Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, so Romans chapter 3, starting with verse 20. It says, therefore, by the deeds or the actions of the law, in other words, if you're trying to live under the Ten Commandments and, and living underneath all of the commandments, trying to do everything right to, uh, uh, to, to earn the favor of God, it says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh, no person will be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin so let me just say this how many of us know the law is good Absolutely. That's because right. what it does it expose our sin but the problem with that is if we don't understand the grace side of it wow. what we will do is try to we, we it'll condemn us right we'll start feeling condemned how many of us felt condemned oh, sometimes yeah. We, I, I can't tell you how many times I've just beat myself upside the yep. head for yep. just struggling with certain sins. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Yep. You know, especially when you're, when you're struggling, it's like, man, Lord, I just, man, I, I, I ask God to forgive me, and here I do the same thing. Here I'm thinking the same thing. You know what I'm saying? And, and what happens is that stuff begins to settle in your spirit, and you start feeling so heavy. And you don't feel blessed, and you you know, and 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 you and you begin to condemn yourself. How many of us know we condemn ourselves? Yes. Come on, people yeah, of God, y'all right. with me here? Yeah, that's right, that's right. We condemn ourselves, and then we try to get back into the grace of God by trying to earn God's favor. I spend years and years and years. Well, uh, well, I yeah. keep saying that. Well, how old is he? Um, <laughs> but I spent, <laughs> but I spent so many years. Josh, trying to earn God's favor right. and didn't understand the righteousness of God. This is why Paul, you know, in Romans, uh, I believe it's chapter 1, where he said, I pray for Israel that they might be saved. That's it. Mm -hmm. For they go about seeking their own righteousness. They had a zeal for God, but they tried to establish their own righteousness. Wow. And they were ignorant of God's righteousness. How many of us know God has his righteousness yeah, for us? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how many people, and y'all listening to me on Facebook, there are so many of you listening right now, you're just trying to earn the favor of God. You have the zeal, 
is there, the fire is there, but it's not according to the knowledge of God. It's not according to God's righteousness. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Listen, I'm trying to free somebody up today. Right. <laughs> this, this, this is a life-changing message here. This message is a game changer here because some of us have gotten to a place and some of us are there right now where we feel so loaded down and stressed out because we're struggling with a certain sin and we feel stuck and now we're trying to earn God's favor. If I just come to church a little bit more, if I can just do a little bit more of this, a little bit more of ministry work, yeah. I earn that favor of God. That's not, that's no way to live, people of God. It's no way to live. So, Here's, here's another one that's um, really uh, a good one to look at. Romans chapter 1, starting with 16. And I'm sure that we all are familiar with this particular passage here. Again, we're talking about law and grace. We're talking about the difference. I said that grace is a system to obtain righteousness. That means being in right status with God. But it's having faith in the blood. It's having faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Am I right about that? Yes, sir. And then when you have law, it's a good thing. However, say however. However. It's a system where you earn the favor of God. I don't know about you, but I don't want, I don't want to earn God's favor. Yeah. I want to know that I, I have the grace of God in my life. I want to know that I have the grace of God. That God, that I am righteous in His sight. Right? I'm yes. pleasing in the sight. Why? Because that helps me to have a great day. <laughs> Y'all listen to what I'm saying. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying here. I mean, to know that, it, I mean, to, to, to think that God, is, he's like a God that's going to beat you upside the head every time, or to walk around as believers feeling condemned, that's not a good way to go about life. That's not a good way to, to witness. You can't even witness if you think, if you're condemned. If you're struggling with a certain sin and, and you feel that the favor of God is not on your life or you feel that God is not pleased with you, that's a hard way to live as a believer. That's why there's people, they come to church and they don't, they don't, they don't feel free to worship. They don't, they don't feel that, that, that good life. Okay. Am I right? That's right? Because of burden, being burdened down, yeah. because God is mad, God is upset with me. And then what they try to do is earn God's favor. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm in so much debt with God. Man, I gotta pray a little bit more. I need to get back into my prayer routine. Man, you know what else? I, I, I haven't been reading and so, you know, I just, I really need to get back you know, at least reading, you know, about three times a week. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying, all these legal, mm -hmm. legalistic stuff? Because we're trying to earn, and I'm not saying those things are not good, they're good. But we don't want to get to a place where we think that doing those things will earn God's grace. Yeah. We don't want to get to a place where we think that that will earn the favor of God or the grace of God in our lives. Because those things are legalistic, right? Because we live in a society, Josh, where we have we have been taught you do good, good to come. <laughs> How many of us have been taught that? Yeah. You do good, good to come, right? And and we have been taught that we have to earn favor. There's nothing wrong with that. However, when it comes to God, you don't have to earn his favor. See, we bring all the worldly stuff into the church. Right? Yeah. We bring all the worldly stuff into the church. And we, we, we have that same mindset when it comes to God. Yeah. And we say, well, you know, in order to, to, to get the grace and to get the blessings of God, we got to do good. We got to do right in order to gain the blessings of God, in order to get the favor of God. And that's not necessarily true, people of God. I'm going to show you. See, the old covenant, the old law, was based off a con of, of a condition. And I'm going to show that to you. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 11. 
See, there, there were stipulations with the, with the law. Just like, earn, just like receiving a credit card. There are stipulations to it. Right? And you right. get yourself in a contract, a one-year contract, and you miss one payment, maybe there's a little grace. <laughs> but you miss another payment, maybe you'll get enough, a little bit more grace. But you miss that third payment, they, the, those, um, what do they call it? Uh, interest is just going to rise up. And you get to a place where you locked in this covenant, you locked in this contract, you can't even pay pay your way out. All some y'all y'all laughing, smiling. Oh yeah, I'm in that situation right now, bad day. <laughs> I'm reading your email, huh? <laughs> but do y'all are y'all understanding what I'm saying though? That's too much stress. Yeah. And then it's like, well, well, what what's going on, bro? What, what what's your problem? Well, you know, I'm just uh, really. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be acting that way towards you. It's just that I'm just in, full of debt. See, this stuff make you crazy. When you feel that you're in some kind of debt, that's not a good thing. That's not, I, that's not how I want to roll. Turn to the person next to you and say, that's not how I want to roll. That's not how I want to roll. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, people do it. Die. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything is always based on the condition. So Deuteronomy chapter, what did I say, chapter 11. one? Oh, okay, y'all in the spirit. Right? Yeah, yeah, we Lord. in the spirit. <laughs> All right. So Deuteronomy chapter 11, starting with verse 26, it says, Behold, I set before you today blessings and curse. The blessings if, say if. 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 Isn't that a stipulation? Yep. Yep, true. It says, Behold, I set, this is God, I set before you today blessings and curse. The blessing, say it with me again, if, if you obey the commandment commandments of the Lord your God which I command you today and the curse if, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord but turn aside from the way which I command you today go after other gods which you have not known look at that you mean that old oh, no, law that commandments all those commandments all those stipulations boy I, I, I don't know if I can live underneath all that stuff and we're not just talking about the Ten Commandments, people of God. We're talking about all the commandments in addition to the Ten Commandments. Yeah. And if you broke one, you broke them all. And not only that, but there was, these, these were stipulations. How many of us have ever been in a relationship where, you know, you're trying to, you know, you like this person here, and, you know, you're just trying to earn that person's favor, and then once you get... Some of y'all probably too young. But anyway, so I'm talking to a whole, you know, y'all. But, 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 but see, I found myself, when I got married to Octavia, we've been married 28 years, praise the Lord. Woo. All right, all I right. know, I know, I know. I, look, I know I look Eight. like I'm about 29. Oh, yeah. Years. That's right, Pastor. <laughs> got a day over there. In addition to what, 23 years? Oh, All right. So anyway, I, I, I was trying to earn her favor. I was just trying to do everything I could to make sure I hold up my end of the bargain. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and not realize that if I understood the love of God, if I understood the grace of God, and understood that she was in line with God, then I wouldn't have gotten to a place where I'm trying to earn that love. Because what happens is when you fall out of, out of line, you know, most people just say, you know what, I just, mm -mm, nope, nope, you got to go your way. Right? Because there's, are y'all tired? Y'all look like y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we with you, Pastor. We're yeah, we're, we're all right. I see it's been a long Saturday for some of y'all, I know. <laughs> all right, so anyway, um, let me give you another one, too. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I just want to make my point here. De Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, verse, starting with verse 3. Are y'all getting something out of this? Yeah, yeah. man, yeah. Okay, yeah, watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3. It says, therefore, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, meaning the commandments, right, that it may be well with you, and that you may 
great uh, that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk the way, and, and, uh, uh, when you lie down. So, so God's just, you know, just showing them why it's important to do all these things. And here's another one here. And this is going to show you what I'm talking about in terms of uh, 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 how, how you can fall out of the favor of God in these days. In Jeremiah chapter 11, starting with 9, it says, And the Lord said to me, A conspiracy has been found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned back, they have turned back to their iniquities or their sins. Just think about us of their forefathers who refused to hear my word. And they have gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with the fathers. Therefore, thus said the Lord, behold, I will surely bring calamity on them, which they will not be able to escape. Uh, though they cry out to me, I will not listen. So in other words, what, what I'm trying to say, people of God, is back then, under the old law, the old system, they had to earn the favor of God. Every time the children of Israel got out of line, there was calamity. There was something bad happened as a result of that. But there's good news, people of God. The good news is Jesus fulfilled that law. He took our place so that there would not be any... Um, I want to be careful when I say this because I know some people might be thinking, well, wait a minute, it's just not about all the grace, all the grace, and all the grace. You, you have to get to a place where you obey God. How many of us know we should obey God? Yeah. What I'm saying is we don't, we're not obeying him to get approval. There you go. There you go. That's it. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. We're not obeying him to get approval. We're obeying him because he said so. All right, so that's that's the difference. I want I wanted to share that with you. All right, so um, also I want you to understand. Well, let's look at Second Corinthians chapter ten because I think that there there are some some of you out here uh, who is in a situation where you you're falling underneath that old law and you're earning the favor of God, and, and I think that's a stronghold. Yeah, I, I truly believe that's a stronghold. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting with verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not what? They're not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. How many of us believe that legalistic is strongholds we, we got to pull down? Yes. We want to make sure that we don't get to that place where we're trying to earn the favor of God. See? Because you get to that place again, you're going to feel burdened, you're going to feel stressed out, you're going to feel condemned, and there's no way to walk in the blessings of God. There's no way to walk in peace. How many of us know that when we're not, when we're struggling with sin, and we're not for sure about how God view us, how many of us know that we lose that peace? We lose, we, we, we feel detached from God, all because we're really not understanding this great stuff, man. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? We don't understand this grace stuff. The strongholds, you know what I call those? Headlocks. Huh. Have you ever been in a headlock before? Just Unfortunately. Can you demonstrate? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> uh, Come on, uh, uh, No, not again. Come on. Not again. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on, I just want one person in a headlock. <laughs> Just like See, this is better when you have somebody right there. Yeah. But, but you don't understand. You cannot, listen, you, you cannot get out of a headlock. And that's what legalistic things do. It puts, it has such a strong grip on the body of Christ. Because we're not understanding this grace of God. I like this one. In Romans chapter 3, starting with verse 24, it says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption 
that is in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you, boy, Amen. to be justified freely, that means you. Say this with me, you guys. Say, I have been, I have declared, been declared, declared righteous. righteous. Therefore, Therefore, I am righteous. I am righteous. Oh, man, y'all better give God a hand praise. Amen. Amen. See, if I understand that, let me set you free. I'm telling you, somebody is being free. See, now you can go back to school, you can go back to work, you can go back understanding who you are and that the judge, God, declared you righteous. And he has put you in a position where you can receive more grace, more of God's favor. You never have to earn the favor of God. And I'm talking to some of you young people here too. You know, I know you guys are in school and, and sometimes things can be all stressed out and I'm talking to you guys out here too. And I want you to be able to be at a place in God where when you pray, you pray in a prayer, prayer of faith. Yes. I want you to be able to pray and know that God hears your prayer. You know why? Because the word of God says a prayer of a righteous person, watch this, they are powerful and effective. The prayers of a righteous person, they are powerful and effective. Say this with me. Say the prayers, the prayers of a righteous person, a righteous person, person. person. they are powerful, they are powerful and, effective. and effective. See, if you don't know that you're righteous in Christ, your prayer life is going to be affected by that. See, you have to know you are righteous. You have to know how you got there. You have to understand what Jesus Christ did for you on that cross. You have to understand the depth of that, and you have to understand that you are righteous in the sight of God. That's your position. Amen. You are positioned that way. Now, the experience is something different. Your position is righteous. However, when it comes to experiencing that, you, your mind has to understand we want the Holy Spirit to enlighten our mind, right? Amen. That's what Paul said. He said, I pray that you will open up the eyes of the understanding. Yes. We need revelation. Amen. That's what we lack. We want the Holy Spirit to be able to shed light on this truth here. And as the Holy Spirit shed light, then... And, and now we can walk in that truth. We can walk in that present truth. We can walk in freedom now because now we're no longer trying to earn God's favor, right? We're no longer feeling condemned. Right? All right. So uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 4. It says, now to him who works. Watch this. Now, 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 all of us can, can relate to this one, those who are old enough to work. Romans 4.4. 4. It says, now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but debt. See, that's why you, you can't work the favor of God. Turn to the person sitting next to you and say, get out of debt. Get out of debt. Get out of debt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's just terrible. I mean, it's, it's already bad enough understanding that what we all know what debt is. None of us, I, when you're debt free, you got to you gotta bounce with your staff. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? When you feel that you owe somebody, that's not a good thing. Brother, just pray for me. What's going on? Just pray for well, you know, I kind of owe, you know, kind of owe a little bit. Come on, people of God. It's bad enough to owe man. But now I'm gonna owe God? No, no, I don't think so, brother. Mm -hmm. And sisters. So God, listen, this is your get out of debt card. It's called a grace card. A grace credit card. It is, they should have such a thing as grace credit card. Maybe I ought to patent that thing. Grace credit card. They got Chase. Let's get Grace. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. They got Chase, but we need some Grace. 
All right, watch this. Faith, because how many of us believe faith is important? Faith is essential. Listen to this. Faith is not uh, in your denomination. What is your faith? Well, I'm a Catholic faith. I'm a, I'm a Protestant faith. I'm, I'm, I'm a Pentecostal faith. See, that's not faith. That's faith in the denomination. When somebody say, what's your faith? You say in Christ. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. That's right? right? That's it. What's your faith? I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a woman of God. I'm a man of God. I have faith in Jesus. Okay. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says, Therefore, having been justified, having been justified, that means declared righteous, because all of us have been, right? Is assuming that you have been. So, Romans 5 1. Therefore, having been, the word been is a past tense. So, I am justified. You are justified. Why? Because Jesus Christ, the or the judge, declared you righteous. Amen to this? Amen. And so it says, having been justified, we have who? We have what? We have peace. We have peace with God. Amen. I can guarantee you that some of you guys that's listening under the sound of my voice feel that you never had peace with God. I noticed what God said. Being justified freely, you have peace with God. Isn't that great to know that? Yes, it is. You have peace with God. And not only that, not only do you have peace with God, now you can experience the peace of God. That's why the word of God says, let the very God of peace rule your heart. See, if I don't have peace with God, then it's going to be kind of hard for me to witness, right? It's going to be kind of hard for me to go about day-to-day -day life, and it's going to be kind of hard for me to walk, in the, to walk victorious. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be hard for me to even sing and praise the Lord because I'm, I, I, there's a wedge between God and myself because of my struggles that I have been experiencing and not even understanding that all I need to do is ask Jesus Christ to forgive me for my sins and allow the blood of Jesus to cleanse you from your sin and know that Jesus became sin for you, that you may become the righteousness of God in Christ. And now you are in right standing with God. You did not deserve it. You did not earn it. What happened was Jesus took your place and you took his place and now you're righteous. And now what happened? I'm in a position to receive more grace. Wow. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm in a position to receive greater grace, yes. more grace of God. So, what is peace? Harmony, free from worry. Uh, there's a word that says shalom, which means health, welfare, wholeness. How many of us want to feel whole? How many of us want harmony with God? Because that's most important. Because he's essential in our life. And so if I have harmony with God, everything else will kind of kind of fall in place now, right? All right. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18, I know I'm throwing scriptures out there. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18, it says, For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, it says, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through him or through faith in him. Well, I tell you, you know, if you don't understand who you are in Christ, you're going to feel that you don't have any access to God. You're going to feel that you don't have any access to the grace of God. What is access? That means you, you, you have access to the grace. It's, it's almost like a, a VIP pass, right? Where you, you can enter in his presence at any time. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying here? Here's another one, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. It says, let us therefore come boldly. Y'all know what boldly means? It means fearlessly. It says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy, uh-oh, and find grace to help in a time of need. How many of us know that we're just in a time of need? I'm, I'm just, just, pers just personalized, and I, ain't just, I don't want to generalize it right now. Every day you're always going to be in need of the, great, the, God, the, uh, the grace of God. But it's important for you to know that you have access anytime. Because I don't want you guys to get to a place where you feel that 
you know, I, I, I have messed up a few times with God and, and this may be the last time, I don't know. I don't want you to be at a place where you have all that burden on yourself. Don't put that much burden on yourself like that. Are y'all listening to what, what I'm saying? Yes, yes. All right, just give me a couple of more scriptures here. In Romans chapter 5, verse 9, I struggle with this particular, um, you know, early on in my Christian life. It, it, it was like, because I had gotten wrong information about God, it, it, it was like any time I messed up, it, it was almost as if God was just so angry with me. And I didn't, and because I didn't really understand grace, I, I was at a place for the first 10 years of my marriage, at least, I struggled really bad. I really struggled because I didn't have a proper understanding of, of God's grace. And every, I condemn myself, other people condemn me as a result of that. And I felt that I had to earn God's grace. But when I read this, along with a few of the other scriptures that I showed you guys, when I read Romans chapter five, verse nine, it says much more than, much more than, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God. That means his condemnation. And then when you look down in verse 18, it says, therefore, as through one man's offense, I found out that it really didn't have anything to do with me. Sin was in my life because of Adam. It says through one man's offense, sin entered and uh, uh, came unto, or judgment, I'm sorry, came upon all men. So I was already judged. I was already condemned. Only because of what one person did. Only because of what Adam done. And then, when I read more, it says, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteousness. Who, who is that one man? Jesus. That's Jesus, right? It says, because of one man's righteousness, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Y'all see that word, free gift? Nothing you had to earn, right? Justification was never was wasn't earned. Justification is just you received it. All right. Um. One more. I'm trying to get one where we can. Uh, oh, okay. Here we go. So, all right, so Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Actually, I got another one. I know, I know. Just hold your board. That's why we don't have any clocks in here. Oh, that's right, y'all got, oh, my God, they got phones. We got phones. <laughs> Way ahead of you. Years ago, you can say that, but now you can't really say all that stuff. All right. So, where did I say I was going? So, you know, none of y'all in the spirit. Galatians chapter 3. 313. All right, one person in the spirit. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Y'all should have been shouting. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. Hallelujah. Have it become a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. And then there's another one that says that the blessing of Abraham might uh, come upon those who believe. All right, one more. Now let's we're in the same chapter there, but let's start with verse. Uh, let's start with verse ten. That's probably what I should have did. It's a, it says, "For as many are of the works of the law are under the curse." All right. What that's saying is, if you're going to be legalistic here, if you're going to be under the uh, under the law, and you're going to try to work the law by doing everything to earn the grace of God, the favor of God, it says you're under a curse. Then it goes on to say, and this will be my last one, 
Curse is everyone that hangs on the oh, curse is everyone who does not continue in all the things that is written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the what? Law in the sight of God is evidence for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not a faith. The law is not a faith. The law is not a faith. But the man who does them shall live by them. So if you're going to live in a legalistic way, you might as well live by them. But it says Christ has redeemed us from the law of the curse. For the curse of the law, having become a curse from us, for us, as it is written, curses everyone to hang on the tree. All right, so we're going to stop right there. And I just want to encourage you guys out here, because I know that some of you guys are burdened down because you never understood the grace of God. I'm here to tell you again that you have obtained righteousness because of the grace of God. And because you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sin and rose from the dead, you are righteous. And so I just want you to understand to get up out of that system where you feel that you have to work for the favor of God. You don't have to work for the favor of God. All right, let's put our hands together and let's just praise the Lord. And I'm going to give you guys an opportunity. If you are not born again and you want to be born again, just repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me and raised from the dead. And I receive him now to be my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And if you have prayed that prayer, you are saved and you are now in a part of the body of Christ. And now you can receive the grace of God because you have the access. And those who want to rededicate their life, just repeat after me. Father God, I've heard this message and I ask, I want to rededicate my life back to you, Lord. Forgive me for my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, the total man from the inside out.